This tutorial will cover the definition of categorical syllogisms, their moods, and their figures. The syllogism is the core form of argument that Aristotle developed in his system of deductive logic. To apply the rules of categorical logic to an argument, the argument needs to be in this standard form. So the definition I'm giving here is the definition for the standard form of syllogism. This is an example of a standard form syllogism which is composed of two premises and a conclusion. The first premise is called the major premise, and the second, the minor premise, and the third, the conclusion. Here are the rules for a standard form syllogism. A standard form syllogism contains exactly three claims. There are exactly three terms that appear twice each, called the subject, predicate, and middle terms. The subject and predicate only appear in the conclusion. The first premise is called the major premise, and the second premise is called the minor premise. The subject of the conclusion is in the minor premise, and the predicate of the conclusion is in the major premise. The remaining two terms are the middle terms. However, just because an argument is in a standard form does not mean it is a valid argument. The form just allows us to evaluate the argument to see if it's valid. Let's go over the parts of the syllogism in detail. First, to identify the subject, predicate, and middle terms, we look at the conclusion. As we've seen, the subject term of the conclusion must appear in the minor premise, and the predicate term of the conclusion must appear in the major premise. In this example, Doug has, a, has quick reflexes, is an A claim and serves as the conclusion. Doug is the subject of the conclusion and whatever term is in that position in the conclusion must appear in either the subject or predicate position of the minor premise, the second premise. Notice that we were talking about the subject term, which in this example is Doug, and the subject position, which is where Doug happens to appear in the minor premise of this example. Quick reflexes is the predicate term of the conclusion and it must appear in the major premise. In this example it happens to appear in the predicate position of the major premise. The predicate term could appear in the subject position of the major premise. For instance, the major premise might have said people with quick reflexes are race car drivers. The remaining term appearing once in the, in the major premise and once in the minor premise but never in the conclusion, is called the middle term. It provides the link between the two premises that lead to the conclusion. In this example, race car drivers is the middle term. It is symbolized by the letter M, so the three letters representing the three terms of the syllogism are S, P, and M. As we've seen, a syllogism is built from three standard categorical claims, the A, E, I, and O claims. The mood of a syllogism is simply the letters that represent the standard claims in the syllogism written in a row. So, an AAA syllogism means that the major premise is an A claim, the minor premise is an A claim, and the conclusion is an A claim. In this example, the major premise is an E claim, the minor premise is an A claim, and the conclusion is an E claim. Scholars of logic in the Middle Ages developed convenient ways of remembering the moods by using names that use the letters of the moods. So the name Celerent refers to the syllogism in the E-A-E -E mood. We won't worry about learning the traditional names for the moods, but here's an example of some of them. The Middle Aged scholars became so familiar with their names and logical properties that they could discuss and debate issues by stating the terms they were using and then refer to the names for the arguments they wanted to make. Here again is an example clearly identifying the parts of the syllogism. A major point to keep in mind is that if an argument in a mood is shown to be logically valid, any argument using that same form will also be valid no matter what terms are used for the subject, predicate, and middle terms. This is a basic feature of deductive logic. The form of the argument determines its logical validity and any argument with the same form will be logically equivalent to it. We need one more piece of information though. Now let's look at the figure of a syllogism. 
the figure of a syllogism indicates the position of the middle term and consequently the predicate and subject terms in the major and minor premises. This rounds out a picture of the structure of the syllogism. There are four possible combinations for the middle term. Each possibility is given a number. So syllogisms with the middle term in the subject position of the major premise and the predicate position of the minor premise is called the first figure. Syllogisms with the middle term in the predicate position of both the major and minor premises is called the second figure, and so on. So a syllogism can be assigned one of four numbers, identifying the positions of the middle term. In this example, the mood of the syllogism is EAE, -E, and its figure is 1. The mood is written with the three letters of the types of claims followed by a dash and the number of the figure. The mood and figure together provide enough information about the form of the argument that we can tell if the argument is valid or not. It doesn't matter what terms are plugged into the form. If the form is valid, it is valid no matter what terms are used. Here's a handy way to remember the position of the middle terms in the four figures. In the first figure, if you draw a line through the middle terms, the line will lean to the left. The second and third figures are arranged so the middle terms are in the middle. In other words, in the predicate position of the second figure and the subject position of the third figure. The fourth figure is arranged so a line drawn through the middle terms will lean to the right. The system of mood and figure make analyzing syllogisms much easier, but the first step is to become familiar with the moods and figures well enough that you can focus on their logical properties. These are determined by the characteristics of the categorical claims, the A, E, I, and O claims. So, if you know the quality, the quantity, and the distribution of the standard claims, and the mood and figure of the syllogism, it is possible to judge the validity of a syllogism at a glance. That skill will be the subject of another tutorial.